All right, everybody, it's time for another painting tutorial. Today we've got a Signar Long Gunner. This is one that was selected uh, when I asked everyone to vote on which out of the Signar commission batch that I had uh, that uh, people would like to see as a painting tutorial. So I figured we could start with this one. And uh, as you can see, it's already glued to the base and it's been primed in black. Then at a 45 degree angle, it came in with a medium gray. That's one to one black and white. And then just white on the uh, the top surfaces and that was done with an airbrush um, so uh, also just a note this is also going to be a video response uh, entry for uh, a painting tutorial competition that is being hosted by Alexandra from Girl Painting so check her out if you don't already subscribe to her uh, I'll put a link in the uh, in the uh, doobly doo so um, one thing to note, this method of priming affords us one particularly handy thing. It allows us to concentrate on color rather than on shading. And the way that I've been doing these up to now is uh, doing pre-shading like this, and it gives us automatic uh, shading very, very quick and easy, and then we add washes to give it color. Now this one I want to be in mostly khaki brown sort of drab, things. So what I'd like to do is do uh, a couple of layers of Griffin sepia and then we're going to um, we're going to work with some other washes to differentiate between pieces here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get some wash going here and get some in the palette. And we're just going to start with uh, just Griffin Sepia from the uh, Games Workshop Citadel paint line. We're going to get pretty much everything down here. Now, this method will yield some very good results in my opinion, uh, and it'll also be quick. So this is more tuned to um, to army painting rather than competition painting. Now I'm sure that you could take these these techniques to another level and uh, really make them shine, but here in this video we are aiming for speed, quality, but speed. Because I am a commission painter, and obviously my number one goal is quality and customer satisfaction. But uh, I also have to make sure that I can give the, the biggest bang for the buck, which means I have to be able to work quickly. So, here we are. Go over all that. And we're gonna be careful not to get any on the skin because uh, though I should have done that first, I did not. And we're just gonna get everything that's not skin and isn't these shoulder pads because I think I'd like to do those in blue. Um, I know that uh, we're straying from the typical Signar, everything's blue sort of paint scheme here, but um, I think we still need to get some some blue in there somewhere just to make it pop. Okay, um, I'm going to let this dry and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay guys, so the, the wash is all dry now, and I went back and looked at the previous segment there and I apologize it was a little bit dark so I've moved the lamp and hopefully this is this is brighter uh, on screen here uh, so uh, next step uh, because as you can see um, it's not particularly dark yet so I'd like for it to be a touch darker before we really start uh, getting getting into uh, the detail work here so I think I'm gonna put a second coat of Griffin, Griffin sepia down on all the parts we just did again uh, so Let's just go ahead and start laying down another coat. Uh, mostly just wanted you guys to see what it looked like after the first coat. Uh, so you can make a judgment for yourself as to whether or not you uh, you actually need that second coat. If it looks good to you, then that's all that matters. Um, especially if you're painting for yourself. So, let's just go ahead and lay down another quick coat. And we're not really diluting this at all. This is straight out of the uh, out of the jar. Um, so 
no worries about dilution at this point because the washes on their own are really quite dilute already. Still trying to avoid skin areas. So on this model, mostly hands and the face. So, and if you do get some on there, it's not the end of the world, but um, it'll just make your your job a lot easier if you uh, if you keep excess wash out of those areas. So, okay. Just a little more hair on the front. I think we're getting to about where we need to be color-wise there. So I'm gonna let this dry again and we will be back in just a moment. So the second coat is done drying now. So what I think I'd like to do is start varying up this, uh, this brown coat here. Um, Though most of it, you know, looks pretty good. I think it's uh, it's only going to make it look better if we vary it up a little bit. So the the stuff that's actually going to be leather, like the boots and the uh, the belts and things, I think I'd like them to be more of a reddish leather. So uh, I'd like to use a little bit of um, Ogren flesh, and I think I'm going to mix it half and half with Bale red. So. Hogren flesh is a little more red than the sepia is, I think, and uh, we're just gonna we're gonna make a really nice dark red for the boots here. We're gonna water it down a little bit because I don't want it to be just blindingly red. Yeah, there we go. Really, we're just looking for some different brown tones here. We don't want it to be clown shoe red. We just want it to be more like some uh, some red, you know, Doc Martin style boots, I guess. There we go. Let's get the other one here. color's not going to show up on these really dark areas underneath the cloak very well. That's okay. They're supposed to be in shadow. Um, and we don't have to worry about them too much. Alright, so I got those. Now what I'd like to do, I think I'm going to do these cuffs on the sleeves in this color as well. Just to give us some reflection of this same color up, uh, up in the upper torso. Once again, you're not going to really see it very much underneath, but uh, you'll see it on the, the top surfaces here. There we are. And um, I think we've got some some like little leather plates under here. Now they may actually be supposed to be armor plates, but I think we're going to treat them like some of these red leather plates. Just some some extra armor, I suppose. There. There we are. So now we've got some of that red strategically placed in, in several different areas around this model to, to give some variation. And uh, I hope this lighting is, is okay, guys. I'm really sorry if it's not. i bring the lamp over a little closer. Okay, all right. Well, I'm gonna let that dry for just a couple minutes and I'll be back in just one second. Okay, so the leather is now 
all dry and uh, I actually went in uh, while we had the camera off and uh, and just hit some of these leather straps up here with some of that same um, auger and flesh and bale red mixture that we were working with a second ago. So what I'd like to do now, uh, before we move away from the cloak, and I know I'm doing this in sort of a bizarre order, uh, because really we would have started with the flesh first and then worked outwards, but I'm sort of doing it in a crazy order here. But uh, let's go ahead and, and keep with what we're doing. Uh, I've mixed a little bit of white in with some griffin sepia uh, and a little bit of water, and I've made sort of um, a, a shading wash here that we're going to be using to, to hit the high points on on these areas. And I'm not using a particularly fine brush. In fact, I don't think I'd really want to. Um, this is going to let us hit some larger areas and have sort of a softer, less precise touch than we would be getting with um, some of the uh, the finer point brushes that we might use for you know, picking out facial features. Um, so we're just hitting some of the, the high points here and really making this this cloak look soft and worn. Um, so we're just starting at the top here and we're dragging down. We're starting where we don't want all the highlights and we're dragging all the highlights to where we want them to end up. We're pulling the paint down. So there we are. We're trying to get too much of it up underneath here just because uh, it's going to be under the, the shadow of the, the scabbard on his back. So we're still trying to keep this relatively uh, dark in the folds and underneath the sword. Um, so let's take a look over here at the other side. And we do have some, some cloth right here. I'll we'll just hit this with some highlights. And I think let's take a look at this pant leg here too. We'll just get a few general highlights up here. And just remember, this is this is, we're looking for for tabletop quality here. We're looking for up upper to to middle range tabletop quality. We are not entering this into a competition. We want this miniature to be done inside of an hour because we've got nine more just like it for this one squad. We like to move quickly, but we'd like to have good results. So there we are on top of that. So let's take a look at him. Make sure we got everything in focus. Okay. Not looking too shabby. And here's the other side. So we're really getting that sort of rough and tumble, uh, camo, khaki, everything's leather very durable looking rifleman now. 